Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest sport on planet Earth, in my humble opinion, is mixed martial arts. And the UFC is by far the biggest promotion out of them all. And what we see every single weekend is the best fighting the best. And that is why we absolutely love it. Sadly, in other sports like boxing, unfortunately, that isn't always the case. Just too much politics involved. That's just the way it is. But that isn't the case in the UFC. We see the best fighting the best almost every weekend, as I said. But... Sometimes there's a few fights that got away. There's a few fights that as fans would leave us salivating. We were all dying for it on message boards. They were full of them. People talking in community saying, I want to see this fight. This is what I want to see. Things like John Jones fighting Anthony Rumble Johnson. Nate Diaz versus Dustin Poirier. Jose Aldo versus Conor McGregor too. Yes, a rematch. That would have been absolutely sensational. But guess what? They're not on the list. They're not what I'm talking about. I'm going to take you right now through five fights that every single mixed martial arts fan wanted to see, but sadly, they never happened. Number five, Daniel Cormier versus Brock Lesnar. Now listen, as we know, Daniel Cormier, DC, he stepped up at UFC 218 to take on the greatest heavyweight of all time, the one and only Stipe Miocic in a super fight. DC had finally got out from the shadow of John Jones and became the light heavyweight champion of the world. And at UFC 218 in Las Vegas, stepped up to the challenge and fought the greatest heavyweight of all time, Stipe Miocic, an absolutely mountain of a man. And DC, whilst being very big, very round, very chubby, very light, Likeable and very heavy was much shorter than Stipe Miocic. So a lot of people thought maybe this was going to be a mismatch. But as we know, first round, they're in the clinch. Boom. Massive right hand from DC. Drops Cormier. Puts him out for the count. And there it is. DC is now the double champ. And shortly after that... Oh shit, hit the fan, because who entered the octagon? None other than Brock Lesnar, the wrestling superstar, and a man with just legions and legions of fans, and a man that was the UFC heavyweight champion before. So he gets in the cage, sneaks up behind DC, gives him a massive push, DC goes flying, they turn around, they're trying to get at one another, all hell breaks loose, and we think, finally, wow, this is going to be a great fan. All the WWE fans are going to tune in, all the UFC fans are going to be behind Daniel Cormier, it's going to do massive numbers, Numbers, but sadly, even though we were all salivating, we were all hyped, we were all looking forward to it, the fight never takes place. Now, at the time, Brock Lesnar, the sly old dog, he was in contract negotiations with the WWE. Now, I don't know this for a fact, but there is a potential that maybe he never planned on having the fight at all. Maybe it was just a ploy, maybe it was just a negotiation tactic with the WWE. But for DC, this would have been a massive opportunity. We all know he loves his wrestling. He's one of the best wrestlers that the UFC has ever seen, and he still coaches a lot of wrestlers to this day. However, um, he's a massive fan of the WWE as well. Doesn't stop talking about it. I don't see the appeal. I don't understand it, but still, horses for courses. So for DC, it would have been a massive opportunity for him to fight a guy like Brock Lesnar, make a ton of money but I'll tell you right now we never got to see the fight but it doesn't matter because DC would have won that fight Brock Lesnar's a big guy he's a good wrestler but he ain't half the fighter that Daniel Cormier is number four Randy the Natural Couture versus Fedor Emelianenko in 2007, the UFC bought out Pride. Now, they were the two biggest promotions on planet Earth. The UFC, American-based Pride over in Japan, and people always said, MMA fans always had the discussion. They had debates. They had arguments over who had the best fighters. Of course, the heavyweight champ for Pride was Fedor Emelianenko, a man that seemed almost unbeatable. At the time, he only had one loss on his record, which was by referee stoppage due to a cut. And Fedor had put on some incredible performances, showed so much art and technique taking on these gigantic men he went to war so many times and i have so much respect for the career that he had on the flip side over in the ufc randy the natural couture a two-weight division champion and everybody knows one of the most humble guys great wrestler uh just just a tremendous man and a great fighter all round. and when as i say the ufc took ownership we thought here we go we're gonna finally get to see the ufc champ versus the pride champ and we can't wait for it sadly however just because the UFC owned Pride, they didn't own the fighters. And Fedor's managers, management, apparently were very tough people to deal with, very tough people to negotiate with, and they could never come to terms. Dana apparently flew all over the place, going to meetings, trying to make this fight happen, because come on, it would have been an absolute 
blockbuster and everybody would have made a ton of money. But the Russian outfit that owned M1 Global, that managed Fedor, they wanted too much. They wanted a co-promotion for one, which of course the UFC would never agree to. And I heard a rumor as well that the Russians wanted the UFC to build a stadium in Russia. So as you can see, I mean, these are ludicrous requests. What the hell was that all about? And, you know, after a fair bit of trying and effort and time wasted eventually, I think Dana White and the UFC said, you know what, we're done. Forget it. So sadly, for the MMA fans, we never got to see that one, but it wasn't for uh, lack of trying on Dana White's part. Number three, Israel Adesanya versus John Jones. Now, as we know, Israel Adesanya, the dominant middleweight champion of the world, is amazing to watch. An extremely skilled kickboxer. This man is poetry in motion. He's got a beautiful frame for it, very tall and lean. He's very fast. He's very skilled. And he's got great takedown defense. People try and take him down all the time. And he has just been running rough shot throughout the entire UFC middleweight division. Now, a while ago, before John Jones went up to heavyweight, John Jones and Israel Adesanya, they were going back and forth all the time. Time. They were talking a lot of shit. And Izzy was not backing down one little bit. And it seemed like these two were on a collision course. And this fight, well, it seemed destined to happen. But as we know, it didn't. It didn't go ahead. Izzy went up to light heavyweight when John vacated the division. He fought Jan Blachowicz and sadly it didn't go his way. He lost by a decision and that's the only time that Izzy got beat. Now, so he's gone back down to middleweight. He's defending there and he's got a fight coming up against Jared Cannonier, having a tremendous career. John Jones, undefeated essentially. He does have one loss on his record to Matt Hamill because of an illegal elbow. But for anyone that knows, John Jones was dominating that fight. And now he's moved up to heavyweight. We're still waiting for the debut. He's bulking up. He's putting on weight. He's getting in a little bit of trouble in his spare time as well. But still, the, the fight of John Jones and Israel Adesanya, two guys with very, very similar frames. Of course, Jones has the better wrestling. I would say that Izzy has the more technical striking, but Jones has the fight IQ. Izzy has the youth. I could go on all day comparing these two, right? But that was a fight that as MMA fans, and I remember as being a former middleweight myself thinking, whoa, this would be very, very interesting. I will say this, I would have favoured John Jones in that matchup. However, can't, you know, can't count Izzy out of anything. The man is a true fighter. He's extremely skilled and he's getting better even still in all the grappling side of things as well. John Jones, can't wait to see him at heavyweight. I'm not sure who he's going to be. It's looking like Stipe Miocic. But as I say, John Jones is Israel Adesanya came close. I don't think there was ever contract discussions, but it did seem that they were on a collision course for one another. But as we know, got away. Number two, George St. Pierre versus Anderson the Spider Silver. Now, as you know, I know both of these guys pretty well. In fact, I've got a few extra scars on my face because of both of them, let's be honest. But let's go back in time a little bit and talk about how great their careers were. And while we're talking about them, let's just remember, we're talking about potentially, well, we don't even know if they're one or two, but they are two of the very best mixed martial artists that we ever saw. We're talking about the GOAT, and there's always discussions. Who is the GOAT? Is it George St. Pierre or is it Anderson Silva? Maybe it's George because of the steroids that Anderson popped for, okay? But that's a different discussion. That's not what we're here to debate. We're here to talk about the fact that these guys never fought because there was discussions of them both fighting one another at one point. They were both running concurrently and dominating their divisions, right? Anderson Silva, as soon as he signed with the UFC, dismantled Chris Lieben, became the champ, dominating Rich Franklin, well, knocking him out, uh, making short work of him, and then went on a crazy streak. I think it was 12 title defences, 14 fights unbeaten, and of course that all came down, crashing to an end when he uh, got knocked out against Chris Wyman, but that's only because he was messing around, no offence Chris. Uh, George St. Pierre on the flip side, same thing, dominating the division, okay, taking out every single welterweight challenger on planet Earth, until he ran into Matt Serra, I know, Matt Serra knocked him out. Matt Serra surprised and shocked the world and well done Matt Serra absolutely love that guy but as we know as we know UFC 83 Montreal I was there making my middleweight debut George St. Pierre got revenge reclaimed his title and George went out there and beat everyone that ever beat him so in a weird roundabout way you could claim that he's undefeated so it seemed only natural for George St. Pierre and Anderson Silva to go head to head to fight one another of course 170 185, that is a 15 pound weight difference. But Anderson Silva was very light, kind of like Israel Adesanya is for the division. So there was talk of them meeting in the middle, maybe 175 pounds. 
Anderson Silva said, I'll even go down to 170. He said, I'll even have a tune-up fight first to, to pay respect to the rest of the division. But as we know, for whatever reason, the fight never happened. And it is such a shame because we would have loved it. Anderson Silva, George St. Pierre, two of the greatest, two of the best people that you'll ever meet. I got so much respect for both of these people, but I will, would have loved to have seen them both go head to head and try and beat the shit out of each other. Now, there's only two men on planet Earth that have ever fought both of these people. Do you know who they are? Yes, myself. Are you trying to intimidate me? The other one being Nick Diaz. Uh, Anderson, I got the victory over him. George, as we know, got me in a choke in round three. So how would that fight have gone? Who would have won? Well... Stay tuned because I'm going to do a video on that one. I'll let you know my official prediction. As I say, stay tuned for that. I'm going to break down both of their styles. But still, I mean, what a fight that would have been. And such a shame that we never got to see it. Porrada, Number one, Tony Ferguson, El Kikui, taking on the eagle, Khabib Nurmagomedov. Now, the fact that this fight never went ahead is just absolutely insane. Because if you don't know, you probably do. This fight was matched up. This fight was contracted. These training camps were taking place. Not once, not twice, not thrice. Don't know what the fourth is. Five times. Yes, these guys were matched up to face one another five times times and it is just unbelievable that the fight never took place now as we know El Kikui uh, still going strong to this day or maybe not so strong given his last fight but still still going strong big shout out El Kikui Khabib as we know retired as the greatest okay 29 you know is he the greatest of all time we don't know that's another debate that's another video. But i got to go to the notes. There is so much shit here. So many circumstances. So much bad luck for why this fight never took place. It's almost impossible to remember them. Now, the first time these two were scheduled to fight one another was way back in 2015. But sadly, the fight never went ahead because Khabib had to pull out because of a rib injury. But he said on Instagram... Brother, brother, I'm not sure I will ever be back because my rib is so bad. But of course, fighters continue to fight. The UFC continues to promote fights and their paths were destined to meet once again. The fight was booked again 2060, but sadly this time it was Tony that was pulling out because of a lung issue. Now, of course, the UFC, they wanted to make this fight. The fight fans wanted to see the fight. The media was talking all about it. So, of course, the UFC tried to do everything they could to put on the fight once again and give the fans what they wanted. They booked the fight for a third time. Now, Khabib heard some rumors that Tony was, uh, you know, he, he wasn't signing the contract because he wanted extra money. So, Khabib went out there and even put out a tweet and said, brother, brother, listen, I give you $200,000 of my own money. You have no excuse. So, anyway, regardless of whatever the contract situation was, the fight was scheduled but sadly on this occasion it was cancelled again again because Khabib was rushed to the hospital apparently because of a weight cutting issue all right now this is just getting stupid now but still you know the story okay UFC booked the fight once again once again, they booked the fight, and this time we get right up close to the fight. It's fight week. Tony's doing the rounds. He's going all over the place. He's promoting the fights. He's at the Fox Studios. He's done his bit. He's talked his shit. He's promoted the fight. He's walking out of the place, trips on a cable, turns his LCL, and that's it. The fight is off once again. Pets' heads are falling off. The world of MMA is losing its mind, and we cannot believe it. But listen, if the fight is good enough to be booked four times... <laughs> then the fight's good enough to be booked five times. And they did. They booked it again, I believe it was November 2019. But we know what happened after that. November 2019 comes be right before January 2020. And shortly after January came the pandemic. COVID-19, the coronavirus kicked in and that messed up everything. Khabib thought the fight was going to happen in Abu Dhabi. He, he was training in San Jose. He flew out to Russia. From there, he was going to go to the United Arab Emirates. And it was just a whole clusterfuck. I mean, this is number one bullshit. This is number one bullshit. Okay, they tried to make the fight five goddamn times, but because of the pandemic, because of quarantining, because of travel restrictions, for whatever reason, the fight never went ahead five times. I mean, it is just... It's incredible. It, it's just wild. That truly is the one that got away. Some of the other ones, they were never, they never got off the starting block. That was booked five times and still 
never happened. Unbelievable. Listen, let me know in the comments down there if there's any ones that you think that I missed or if there's any ones that you think that were more worthy of being on this list. But still, there it is. Khabib versus Tony. Maybe it doesn't deserve to be number one, I guess. Maybe it could have been Anderson versus George St. Pierre. But come on, man. They were booked five times. I mean, that is just unbelievable. Talk about an anticlimax. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you're all well. Take care.